Hello everyone, I am Meet Singhambi, third year student at the Plight Allahabad. Welcome to our channel, Learn Computer Programming with Code Chef. If you are interested in computer programming and want to learn and master data structures and algorithms, this is one stop destination for you. Every day, we will be posting explanations to Code Chef problems, conceptual videos, and also conduct live problem solving sessions. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Did you know that Code Chef also conducts free live classes on an academy? where we teach every possible topic related to competitive programming. These courses are conducted by top coding experts who have been ICPC world finalists and are also highly rated on various coding websites. You can use my referral code ME10 to subscribe and get an instant 10% off. Today we have the problem named strong language, which is a cakewalk based on implementation. So let us see what the problem strong language has to say. So the string is said to be strong language if it contains at least K consecutive character star. And we are given a string S which is having length and, and we are required just to determine that is there are K consecutive star possible or not in this particular string. And if it is the case, then we need to report yes. And if we cannot find at least K consecutive star, then we need to report no as our answer. So let us see some sample test cases for this particular question. Firstly, we have this particular number 5 as the value of n and 2 as the value of K. And we need to determine that in this particular string that are there k numbers of consecutive star there or not. So clearly we can see that the maximum number of continuous star which we can have in this particular string is one only. And as we require at least two star continuous to output yes as our answer. So for this case we need to output no as our answer. Let us see the second test case. Here we want that at least two consecutive star should be there in our string. And as there are two consecutive star at this particular point, so we need to report yes as our answer. Let us see the last test case, which one that at least one star should be there in our string. But in this particular string, there are no such star. So we need to report no as our answer because what we want is that there should be at least one star. But as here there is no such star, so we need to report no as our answer. So let us see how we can approach for this particular problem. So given any such string, what we want, we want that if we can calculate that how many maximum number of continuous star are possible in this particular string, then we are done with the question because then we will check that particular number with respect to K. If that particular number which represents the maximum number of continuous star in this particular string, if that number comes out to be greater than or equals to K, then we can conclude that at least k number of star continuous are present in our string. So we need to report yes as our answer. And if that is not the case that the maximum number of continuous star are less than k, then we will report no as our answer. So the question now reduced to this particular thing that we want to calculate how many maximum number of continuous star can be obtained in the given string. In order to calculate the maximum number of continuous star, which are possible in this particular string, what we will do that we will calculate for each of the index a particular term which represents that how many continuous star are possible starting from this particular index. So if we calculate for this particular string, then for A, we have zero star from this particular index. Similarly, for B also we have zero. For this particular star, we have three continuous star possible from this particular index. For this particular star, we have two. And similarly, we can calculate this particular term for all the remaining values of the index. Yeah. In order to calculate the maximum number of star possible in this particular string, which are continuous, so we will take the maximum of all these terms. Because suppose there is a segment which is representing the maximum number of star possible in this particular string. So the starting point of that particular segment, it will be anything among 1 to n only. And as we are covering all the possibilities, so taking maximum of all these terms, we will have this particular term as well. You can see this with the help of this particular example only. Here we have 3 as the maximum number of star continuous possible and this is also the same term which is here because it represents the maximum number of star possible starting from this particular index. So if we take maximum of all those terms, then we have the maximum number of continuous star possible in this particular string. So the question now reduces to calculate these terms. 
where the term of i it represents the maximum number of continuous star which we can have starting from the index i. Now, if you apply the brute force solution, then the time complexity taken it could be of O of n square in the worst case. Suppose that we have the all of the n terms as the star only. So, for each of the value of index from 1 to n, we will require a loop starting from that particular term to n only. So, it will be O of n square in this particular case. So, this particular brute force approach, it will be taking O of n square, but it will only pass the subtask 1. So, let us see how we can optimize this particular approach and get our solution in O of n only. So, the question now reduced to calculate these terms. So, if you look closely for this particular case only, so we can observe some particular things. Firstly, that if a particular term is not star, then obviously term of that particular index, it will be zero only because we will require to have the continuous star and as the first element itself is not a star, then the value of that particular term, it will be zero. You can see that at all the index where the value is not star, then, then at that particular index, we have zero in our term array. Till this point, if a ith character is not star, then the term of that particular i, it will be zero. But if the ith character it is a star then how do we calculate the term of i term of i it is nothing but 1 plus maximum number of maximum number of star possible from the index i plus 1 this particular one it is the star of that particular ith index only and these the, this particular value it is nothing but how many maximum star are there if we start from the index i plus 1 so this is nothing but term of i plus 1 now this particular observation it can also be proved if you see for this particular case as these values are star so we have calculated their values as zero already so these values are calculated as zero already. So if you talk about the term value of all those index which are star, so you can see that this particular value three, it is nothing but one plus term value of the next particular index, which is one plus two. So it comes out to be three. Similarly, as this particular term, it is also a star. So the term value for this particular index, it will be nothing plus one plus term value of the next element, which is one. So this comes out to be two. Similarly, you can see that for this particular term also, its value will be 1 plus term of the next element which is 0. So, we can write 1 directly here. Same can be observed for the rest of the values if the character is a star. So, this particular point is proven. But here one thing is there. When we are talking about calculation of term of i, then we require that the term of i plus 1 is already calculated. So, when we are calculating this particular array, which is the term array, we will iterating in the reverse direction, that is from the decreasing value of the index. So, that when we are calculating the term of i, then already term of i plus 1 is calculated, so that we can use that particular term. So let us see the code implementation of the same. For each of the test case, we will call the function name solved. Now, for each of the test case, this particular part, it is used to take the input the term array it will represent that term of i it will be the number of continuous star if we are considering that the star are starting from the index i only now as we have already discussed that we need to we need to iterate in the reverse order because there can be dependency of term of i to term of i plus one so we need to make sure that when we are considering the term of i then term of i plus one is already being calculated now if the index is the last index then we cannot access the i plus 1 because it will be out of the index bound so if the a of that particular term it is star then term of i is 1 else it is 0 now if the a of i is star for all the rest of the index which is not the last index then we can surely write this thing that term of i it will be nothing but 1 plus term of i plus 1 and if the value at that particular index it is not star then the term of those element it will be zero only in order to calculate the maximum continuous star possible we need to iterate and take the maximum of all the terms 
from 0 to n minus 1. Now, if this particular maximum continuous star, if it is greater than k, then we need to output yes. Uh, and if it is not, then we need to output no as our answer. Let us submit this particular code. We have an AC. That's it for this one. Make sure to like the video if you gain something out of it. To submit your code even after the contest in an case of feedback or doubt, feel free to leave in the comments. So let us see one another solution for the same particular problem. In this problem, we were required to check are there k consecutive star possible or not. So if we apply the brute for solution and take index from 1 to n and also apply another loop which goes from 0 to k and then we will check that all the elements from idx plus this particular term so are all these k terms which will be available to us from this particular loop are these all stars or not but if you apply this particular approach then obviously it will be order of n into k if k is n equals to n then this particular solution will not pass because it will be o of n square in the worst case but we can optimize this solution by an extent. Suppose that we will make a particular array whose element will be zero if the corresponding element of the string is not a star. So we will obtain an array which will look like this thing. So if we talk now about the question, so basically what we want that suppose we are checking for this particular index, then we will check that are k elements starting from this particular index are all one or not. Or we can also say that if we talk about the sum from this particular range which will be from this particular index till the index i plus k minus 1 because both of these are included. So if this sum is equals to k or not. This particular thing can easily be done in O of 1 only if we apply the prefix array logic and we will iterate from each of the index from 1 to n. So it will be O of n solution in total. So let us see the code implementation of our second solution. So for each of the test case, we will call this function. Now this particular part, it takes on the input of n, k and the string s. <laughs> we have initialized the two arrays where a of i, it will represent that the corresponding character in the particular string s if it is the star or not. And if it is star, so we will mark that particular index as 1. And if it is not star, then that particular element, it will be 0. This particular array c, it will be used to calculate the prefix sum array. The first element is equals to the a of 0 only and for the rest of the terms we can write c of i as c of i minus 1 plus a of i. So c of i basically here it will represent the sum of all the numbers till a till ith index. Now so when we are talking about checking of the k consecutive star so the rightmost element it will be i plus k minus 1 so it should be less than n which is the length of this string because we do not want that we will go outside of this string. So now we just need to check that is sum of this particular range is equals to k or not. So sum for that particular range it will be till that particular point minus the sum which is before this particular i. So if i is equals to 0 then we will return 0 or else c of i minus 1. This condition is necessary because if you access c of i minus 1 for i is equals to 0 then it will be an error. Now if sum comes out to be k then we report yes as our answer and return from here only because we just need to find one such subarray which has k consecutive star and if we do not find any of such k consecutive star then we need to report no as our answer.